Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it Dip Buyer Still. And I think you'll see that as we get in and talk about it. I'm going to focus on the NASDAQ composite this week. Uh, then I'm also actually going to review the QQQ ETF, which directly relates to the NASDAQ composites, the NASDAQ 100. And I'll take a look at the TQQQ, look at ARC, look at the High Yield Bond Fund, uh, also going to look at the dollar index, and we're going to check in on Disney, which has earnings out on May 11th. All right, so starting off here with the weekly view, the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ composite. The Dow was down 78 points, the S&P down 8, and the NASDAQ composite down 190 points. So a little bit of a pause week on the first two. The NASDAQ continues to come down. Now, it's been down for five weeks in a row, so yeah, it's getting extended. And same thing over here with the, the S&P, what, down five weeks in a row. You know, the Dow's down, is it down? Yeah, it's down five weeks also. Actually, six, six weeks over here. So we may get a little bounce. We'll see. Now, before you start thinking, well, this is definitely a bottom, just as a little bit of a caution, in 2000, the NASDAQ was down six weeks in a row at one point, and in 2001, it was down seven weeks in a row. So you just never know. All right, let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite. Take a look. Well, I've got Disney up here. Let me go back to the NASDAQ composite before I go to Disney. We'll come back to that. So right here, here's the picture. Here's the daily and the, the weekly view. We just talked about the weekly view. Here's that all-time high that occurred back here the week of November 21st. And on Friday, NASDAQ Composite was down 173 points. So let me stretch this out. Here's the daily picture. Here's what I'm looking at from my preferred count on the LA Wave picture. I think there's a decent chance that we are approaching the end of this fifth wave move. And I'm talking about this fifth, what I call, minute wave down which would complete a five-wave structure for the first minor wave. So then this is what we'd be looking at. Now, this is just a projection up here to wait for wave two. Okay, first we got to finish wave one before we start talking about exactly where we think wave two is going to go. Uh, so right now, this is what we're looking at. Now, there's also, there's always the possibility that this could extend. Okay, so just because we've got it down here at the end of this, this uh, you know, channel, it, it could always extend down here. So we continue to watch how does the wave structure unfold in here. Now, there is an alternate count that I've got. The alternate count would say, well, we had a wave one that completed here on February 24th. We got a wave two bounce and we're in a wave three. This would put it more in sync with the Dow and the S&P 500. We'll see. I mean, the NASDAQ uh, composite is down about 24% or so from intraday high to intraday low at this point. So it could very well be that we're approaching the end of this first wave. We'll just have to watch and see how the wave structure unfolds in here. Okay. Oh, there is one other thing I wanted to just mention. You know, as you get, as you work your way down to the end of the first five wave moves in here, uh, you know, you don't have to have some kind of major financial event occurring. But when I look back at to the, uh, the five waves moved down in, uh, from 2007 to 2008, the first five wave moved down on the Dow. And I think it was the same with the S&P, et cetera. It was all right around mid-March of 2008 when they bottomed. And this is what, what was occurring. Let me see if I can pull this up for you. Right here on March 16th, Bear Stearns collapse. It was at $2 a share. JP Morgan buys it. Wall Street stepped up and saved Bear Stearns. They did not save Lehman Brothers in September. Okay. And this occurred within like two days of the, uh, the first wave down uh, of the five wave move that went from October of 2007 to March 2009. So we'll see what happens as we approach the, you know, we get to some extremes here. We're just not there yet because we're still seeing these dip buyers kick in. And here's what we're talking about. I saw this tweet this week. 
right here. This guy said the risk on posse, what he called the risk on posse, the Qs, the TQQs, which is the leverage Qs, ARC, everybody's familiar with that, and the high yield bond fund took in a hefty $4.3 billion this week. And he published this on May 7th, Saturday, yesterday. And so, you know, a lot of money flowing in. Why this is this is risk, these are high risk types of uh, movement, especially you know, HYG, TQQ, uh, Q's not so much, but it's again, it, to me, it's a classic of the dip buyers still wanting to dive in and, uh, and say, okay, we're calling the bottom here. We'll see what happens. Okay, so let's take a look at the Q's. It's gonna be very similar to what's happening here with the, uh, the NASDAQ. And let me find it right here. So here's the picture I've got, same, same kind of picture. Actually, I wanna to go to, let me just go to this first. I just wanna show you, here's, the, here's what I'm seeing when I just look at this, just from a pure technical analysis perspective. I could tell you over here on the weekly chart, let's just go there first. The first area of support, there is an area of support that's not too far down below where we are, and that would actually support my preferred count on the Qs and the NASDAQ composite in terms of potentially getting some support in here. Well, why this area? Well, this is where prior support you know, came in, right in here on this pullback, and that was right at this area. And so what are we talking about? We're talking about 297.51, to 299.51, so say 297 to 300, okay, in that zone. Okay, so that is, that's it to me, the next level of support that could be happening. We broke down below a key level here at 328.40, and it, it couldn't hold, and it snapped back to that level. It actually did it immediately, and then it came back a couple of days later and came back a few day, more days after that, it could never get above that or get any kind of follow through. Closed above it one day and then it sold back off. So right now, this is gonna be the next test down here, 297 to 300. We'll see what happens. We'll see, does this, does this wave structure end in here? And then we get into something a little bit bigger in terms of wave two, we'll see. Okay, so that's gonna be the next test. And let's take a look at uh, the TQQQ. Okay, so here we got the Ultra Pro QQQ. So this is the leverage version of the Qs. And it was down $1.92 this last week. This is a weekly view. So you can see, yeah, we're, we're coming down pretty hard. So the real challenge is, are we willing to, people willing to step in and, and try to catch a falling knife? It appears that some folks are. And so when you look at this and say, well, to me, when I look at it and say, well, where's the next area of support? I would have to say right down in here was going to be the next test. That's 28.45 to 20, let's just call it 7. So say 27 to 28.50 is going to be the next test, I think, for this. And if that doesn't hold, well, there's not a whole lot of support down below before you get down to where that March 2020 low is. And matter of fact, that March 2020 low came in right very close to where that December 2018 low was also. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, there could be a lot to give back. We'll see. Okay, so that's the picture on the queue. So let's take a look at uh, ARC. It was the ARC Innovation ETF. And, you know, this has been in the news a lot. Uh, this also has pulled back dramatically. But look where it's at. To me, it just hasn't gotten any support. I mean, we've had some bounces, there's no doubt. And it looks to me like this almost looks to be, if I had count, the only a wave count on the way down here, this looks like one, two, like we're fleshing out, maybe close to the end of a third wave, maybe we get a little bounce. But there's not much support until you get to that May, uh, March 2020 low. And so what are we talking about down here? 30, say 35 to 33. So 33 to 35, if this continues to come down, I just don't see any other support. Although when you look over here and you say, well, 
if you come off of this high, you could almost draw a line that's going right through all of this price action. And that's pretty close to where the low of this was. So I could see why some people might want to sit back and say, well, let's see, could we get some support in here at this point? But again, it's like trying to catch a falling knife. Now, the other thing is you look at and say, well, we're getting a little bit of bullish divergence on the RSI. And I use a 10 RSI on my readings. But my only caution on that, you know, I like looking at RSI. I like looking at divergences, but you have to go off of price action also. OK, and so here's the thing. Look at what happened to the upside. Yeah, you get your divergences. Yeah, you get a little bit of a pullback and then it just continues. So it can just continue to ride the trend to the upside and it can just continue to ride the trend to the downside. OK, so we'll have to watch and see again. Price action is the key. Now, this is a weekly view. OK, the last thing I want to take a look at is to look at the high yield bond fund, which I look at every day. Now, here's the weekly view of HYG. Now, this is not a pretty picture and the high yield bond fund is continuing to say risk off. So look what it did this last week, down 94 cents. But the key thing is when you look at where the support is, you know, you really have to say there was key support right in here. We're talking about what is this? So 77.98 and 78. So, you know, right around 78, you know, plus or minus, and we closed below it. So, yeah, could we bounce back up and try to retest a little bit? Yeah, but to me, this is a definite sign of weakness when you close below this kind of solid support where support came in, you know, the week of April 19th, 2020. And again, on the week of May 10th, 2020, you know, and and, uh, and then we rallied off of that and we just closed below that. So that is that is not a pretty picture right now here with the high yield bond fund in terms of what it's telling you about the marketplace. OK, so another interesting thing, I, I actually watched this um, this video uh, earlier in the week and um, I wanted to share this with you if I can uh, find it real quick. I was uh, earlier in the week, Paul Tudor Jones was on CNBC on the Squawk Box early in the morning. And uh, one of the things he said is you can't think of a worse macro environment than now. He was talking, he just came right out and said he just didn't think that he ought to be owning bonds and stocks. So, uh, you know, that's his high level uh, picture. That's his high level assessment. There's like a video. If you go to this clip, Andrew Ross Sor Sorkin retweeted this. Uh, pretty interesting. I always like listening to to uh, Paul Tudor Jones. Uh, that guy has been around for a while and he definitely knows his stuff. All right. So you saw the dollar index there uh, in the background in that video. So let's take a look at the dollar index and see what's going on. This is just a pure, you know, what I call my moving average view in here, technical view of the dollar index. This is a weekly view. Look how it is broken above this longer term trend line. And this is this is actually not that long term. This is only about five years worth of data in here. But if we go back, let's take a look at my Elliott Wave count. OK, here's what I'm looking at. This is this is all the data I've got on the dollar index. OK, so here is 1985. And here's the bottom in 2008. February of 2008. So right now, I think we're in bull mode and I've been bullish on the dollar for quite a while. And I think we're in a cycle wave three. We're working our way up and we've broken above this major trend line. So right now, when I look at this, I think, well, what could we be doing now? I think there's a decent chance. Maybe we just for the next few weeks, maybe we just chop around up here above this trend line and then continue to push. We'll see. But right now we are clearly breaking out and it's been strong. Yeah, we're overbought. I'm not seeing any major divergence occurring at this point. So that is the picture on the dollar index. And of course, that's going to be affecting a whole lot of things. And this last week, it killed all of the um, emerging market ETFs. Just you know, everything was down big. 
All right, that's it. Oh, I have one more thing I wanted to talk about Disney. Let me just go to that real quick. Let's just show the picture on Disney. Um, yeah, I've got an Elliott Wave pick count on it, and it's not pretty. Uh, but let's just go to uh, a regular moving average view. Here's the weekly count, the weekly view of Disney. You can see where it's at. The low is 108.30 here this last week. Coming off the high that occurred March of 2021, 203.02. Wow, we are down 46.7% from peak to low, peak to trough here. And you know, yeah, we got earnings coming out. We'll see what happens. Uh, but man, that is one heck. We're back to level, back to level of June 2020. If the Dow were to trade at the level that it was at in June 2020 and mirror the kind of sell-off down here and just get back to this level, comparable level, the Dow would be 8,000 points lower, 7,800 to 8,000 points lower. So we'll see what happens in here, uh, but pretty dramatic uh, move down here with Disney. And right now it still looks like continued weakness to me. So that is the picture there. We'll see what happens this week. Everyone, uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. If you'd like more of this kind of information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net, check out the website, check out the membership. Everyone have a great week and, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there.